drip. Not very exciting, is it? I've already ran through and collected all my sap. I've got a five gallon bucket full out of uh, 12 taps, 12 or 13 taps. I uh, pulled a couple while I was here last time. I just went around and I put three more in. So, yeah, nice little area in here. Lots of birch. Some bigger ones too, so that's nice. Surprisingly enough though, the biggest ones here haven't been the best producers, so. You can hear it dripping in the bucket. <laughs> Might as well show you guys how to tap a birch tree. We got uh, one extra bucket here. And I'm already short of hands. Okay. You'll need some form of a drill. An axe is handy. A piece of hose, a bucket, or a container and the lid. Once you got all that, you're gonna need a birch tree. But not just any birch tree. See, this tree right here, if you look at the crown, it's kind of scraggly. It doesn't have a lot of nice leafy, well, soon to be leafy limbs coming off of it. So we wanna find trees that are more like that one there. There's lots of branches, something that looks like it's gonna really come to life. But I don't wanna walk over there. I wanna walk this way instead. We've got a few good candidates over here. Maybe that one right there on the edge of the trail. Here I do my bowl in a china shop routine. Now you can see the merit of using orange buckets out here. Unfortunately, it makes it way easier for everybody else to spot what you're doing, so if you're trying to not draw attention to your equipment, you might want to pick a white bucket. You can kind of see in the back there, that orange one stands out really, really well. 
And there's two white ones behind it blend in a lot better. I mean, it's still dense like a sore thumb, but not as bright as all these orange ones do. I mean, you pick those ones up instantly. So, okay. That's a good looking birch right there. Now, what you want to do Okay, got our birch. Looks like a good candidate for a tap. Notice, so I'm facing, well this would be north right now, okay? And if you look to the south, you notice that we're in a northern latitude because that sun is to the south of me. But we want to tap this tree facing south. Otherwise, well, the backside of the tree takes forever to warm up during the day, and then you have really low sap production out of it. So. Get all of our gear handy. And then use file. So. I bought these off of Amazon. They're rather expensive. I really don't suggest you use them, but I've got them. I paid for them. I'm not using them. I've also got uh, most of these buckets are using the plastic uh, 50 cents a piece, whatever they are, saps files. They also use a lot smaller drill bit. So here we go. Hello? Hello? Is there sap in there? Hmm. I guess there's only one way to find out. So, I tap pretty low because my hoses are short. So, of course this drill bit is squeaky clean. Whoa! A little far. I'm hard to this one here, but... There we go. Now, can you see? I've already got sap running like crazy out of that tree. And I just take our spile, put it in there. There we go. There we go. Give her a couple of taps. Don't drive it right in flush, you don't need to. Now, buckle our hose on there and just push right on. And you can see, this sap's just running. Yeah, not long left in the season here. Trees are, uh, trees are starting to butt up around my house, but it's a lot more open in here. In case you haven't noticed, we've already got Oh, we still have snow on the ground. So. Now, we're gonna put our hose into our bucket. This is really hard to do one handed. Bucket is gonna sit there, and it will. Now, uh, I buy the buckets with lids. I put the bucket lid right back on, push down one side, push down the other side. The hose still has plenty of drainage, plenty of slope to get into the bucket, and nothing big is gonna jump in there. You don't really want to find a mouse in there or anything, so. Yeah, so now, probably in our last week of sap up here. And it's a lot of work, a lot of work. Let's have a Quick look at the sap spiles that I use because they might generate some questions. So these are stainless steel spile. This is off of Amazon. I've seen them anywhere from 
I don't know, two dollars a piece to five dollars a piece, depending. I know price is crazy, like I said, but I wanted to try a, a stainless steel spile, and these are quite nice. So it was worth a shot. They're not producing any more than me. Uh, these are the cheap ones. They got them all over Amazon. If you search for a sap spile, it's going to take you to these ones. So they're very small. This end, I, I don't even know what size of drill bit it is. It's smaller than quarter inch though. So it's got a very small hole in the end of it. Uh, I should give you something for size reference, but the only nice thing is, is that that clips on to the standard tubing. I believe, what does it say here? 3 8 ID, half inch OD, mm, PVC. So it's just clear plastic tubing. And they fit right in. So if you're looking for the tube size for these, it's uh, yeah, 3 8 ID tubing. There. So here's the bucket of sap that we've collected. expect your sap to be squeaky clean when you go and collect it. It's going to be full of uh, just about everything you can imagine. We've got a mosquito over there. Yeah. Anyways, that's what filters are for. You just filter it out when you get home. What does sap taste like? It tastes like water with a hint of birch. Mm, not really much of a smell to it. You can drink it straight. You can make wine out of it. You can make beer out of it. Lots of different things you can make out of it. Today, we're gonna make a cup of coffee. Use of a more bushcraft carbon steel, eh? <laughs> we got up here. Let's see, there's a red pickup back there. Uh, a couple of hunters. They spotted my buckets actually, and they took a walk through and see what I was up to. So nice guys. They carried on down the way here. If you uh, continue on down this trail, it'll get you uh, probably within about a mile of Pasquaska Lake. So. Of course, that's a ways down there, and you're probably gonna want an Argo to get anywhere near the lake. So she's uh, she's what country out here? And I'm on a knoll right now, actually. Like this is a hill that goes up and goes down, <laughs> and there's a swamp in the middle of it. So welcome to Alberta.
custom evaporator. I just picked it up today. Up until this point, I've been using just pots and pans. This is a Camp Chef Denali Pro. It's got three large burners underneath of it. I'll throw in a couple of pictures of the way I did it over the weekend to deal with a really big batch of sap. But Say hi to everybody. Say hello, Willie. Yeah. Where's my food? <laughs> so yeah, um, we're just gonna keep boiling this down and down and down. There's actually 20 liters in there right now. I could comfortably put 40 in here, but one bucket at a time is enough. That's the bucket I had full of sap there. So water boils at about 213 degrees Fahrenheit and the sugars in here burn at about 230 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically you can't burn it by boiling it until you end up with a high concentration of sugar in there and the sugar can hold more heat and it will scorch. So just keep your eye on it. Uh, I try to keep my temperature fairly low. So. That's a that's a good blow. An evaporator this size. This is uh, 18 inches by 37 and a half inches, and this evaporator should do five gallons an hour of evaporated water. I'll uh, bring you back when we go in to finish it up on the stove or when I uh, shut this evaporator down. Ow. Say Ow. hi, Asriel. Camera shy. So here's how I uh, finish boiling up my sap in here and that becomes syrup. So this is actually uh, from a 60 liter batch I did yesterday. I kind of got busy when I filtered that last batch and yeah I just sort of forgot to film so no worries. I picked up 190 liters of sap off of my taps on the weekend and now I'm finishing everything up here. But this is three buckets or about uh, 60 liters worth of sap. It's all boiled down. Um, we're finishing in the stainless steel pot on the stove. The heat's a little high. We're just gonna keep turning it down until it finds about uh, 200, 210 degrees. And we'll just keep reducing and reducing and reducing until we have our syrup. The way we know we have syrup is actually uh, we use a refract refractometer. Refract. So this is one I got off of Amazon. And it's actually for measuring the sugar content or moisture content of honey. And another quick and dirty way that you can do it. Boy, she just doesn't want to come down. Uh, just take a spoon, dip it in, and you'll see that it just instantly kind of runs off like water so we're not syrup yet so this doesn't thicken up like honey or like uh, maple syrup does it stays pretty liquidy right to the end till you get about uh, 65 to 70 on the brick scale and that's what this measures is in the brick scale and actually have a syrup and not uh, sweet birch water you want about uh, 65 66 bricks I take mine to somewhere between 66 and 70, 72 bricks. So it's good and dry and shelf stable. Uh, this is what I have collected so far. This is from earlier in the season. It's really nice and light colored. And then the last batch got a little dark. And then from this last 200 or 190 liters I picked up, it's a little bit darker yet. So. 
Yeah. When I was out on the weekend, I pulled all my taps and plugged all the holes. So we're we're done sugaring birch so far this spring. So we'll uh, take another kick at it next year. Do things a, a little, a lot differently. But that's a nice light syrup compared to our last batch. It's a lot darker. And that's actually sugar sand. It, uh, when you when you boil at higher temperatures to finish, you'll start to get those sugar sands that precipitate out. So uh, good luck getting it out once it's in there. The maple guys use big, really expensive uh, presses, vacuum filters. And here we have a simple way. We just put it in the fridge, let that sediment fall out, and then pour the good syrup off the top of it and you end up with a nice clear syrup and it's a small batch so it's easy to do that. Uh, if you had a couple of clean jars you just, yeah, you'd figure it out. So right about 215, I'll try to bring it down just a little bit more. The more water you boil out of your sap and the closer it gets to being syrup, the faster it actually heats and the more heat it holds. So your temperature starts to go up and up and up and up and you have to watch it closer and closer. But this this has a long way to go. This is going to boil down to mm, probably half a liter. So just over two cups is what I'm expecting to get out of this. And that should be just enough to top off that jar. Maybe a little bit more. So I'll bring you back when we actually have syrup. All right, so we're about uh, four hours into this, and we're done. I'll show you a quick, easy way to check. Just take a regular spoon, dip it in, kind of just let it cool. And you'll see now that you start to get drippy syrup instead of just sap water. Give this a little stir. Get rid of some of that foam for you. There. As soon as that cools on the spoon, it starts to freeze. Just like maple. A little bit thinner, but not much. And we have tested it, and we're actually at about 68 bricks right now. So. We're where we want to be. Now, one final filtering. Right there. So this is just a metal coffee pot. Stainless steel filter. It's a French press. Shut our burner off. And try to pour and not spill. That's actually a lot more syrup than I was thinking I was gonna have. Just give that a little roll. Dripping out just fine. I'll let it finish dripping. 
let it finish dripping and we'll put it in the jar. But yeah, that's how you make brick syrup.